on a dark, stormy night on Friday the 13th, which isn't a big deal except when your parents are crazy superstitious. Instead of letting out my first cry, I made some spit bubbles and giggled. This child is weird. Why isn't she crying? Look at her devilish smile. Once when I was two, I was playing with my grandmother and it was the first time I called out her name. Daddy, but it wasn't a celebration because the same day she passed away. A few months later, when I learned to say my grandpa's name, Dada, he passed away too. Oh my god, this is the beginning to an end. If she says another word, she might kill us all. And the very same day, my uncles and aunts left the village with their entire families, and my parents just got weirder and crazier. I loved the color black, but they thought it was demonic, so they'd paint all my favorite black things pink. One time when I was five, I rescued a cute black cat from the streets and brought her home. I named her Kali, but my parents went ballistic. Black cats are evil. They'll bring death upon us. But he's my little meow meow. The only thing that could kill us is his cuteness. They didn't listen to a word I said and threw Kali out of the house that night. And I was furious. I started screaming at the top of my lungs. And just then, there was a loud clap of thunder, followed by a loud bang. My parents looked out the window in horror to see an ancient, sacred tree struck down by lightning. Mom turned as pale as paper, and Dad started praying to all 33 million gods. We're sorry. Please forgive us. We've been really, really bad. Yes, we're going to bring your precious little Callie back right now. They immediately dashed out of the house and came back with Kelly at 3 in the morning. The very next day, they woke me up at 5 in the morning and took me to see my aunt, who lived in a far-off village. When we got there, a woman dressed in black clothes came out. That's your aunt. Go hug her. She's just like you. I got off reluctantly, but before I'd even reached my aunt, mom and dad were gone. They just left me there. I was about to burst into tears, but my aunt gently took my hand. And when I went inside, my jaw dropped. The entire house was full of black ornaments and decorations. This place was heaven. You don't have to worry about anything, love. I'll take care of you from now on. For days, I thought my parents would come back for me, but they never did. And I didn't even mind because unlike them, my aunt adored me. She was a tarot card reader, but she never taught me any of it. Instead, she put me in school. When I went to school on the first day, I was in for a surprise. It was an empty piece of land with cows and buffaloes grazing there. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I thought they had a building around here somewhere. Don't worry, I'll teach you at home. Well, she did teach me a couple of things, but none of them were useful. Once when I was 13, I was playing in a field with the neighborhood kids when suddenly one of them got bit by a snake. Everyone started screaming and running around in panic. Just then, a man came and decided to take him to the temple instead of the hospital. What are you, crazy? He needs to go to a doctor right now. Are you out of your mind? God will heal him. Ah, uh, this was nuts, but I wasn't going to back off that easily. I bit him hard on his hand and he started screaming. This girl is crazy. She bit me. She bit me. Uh, I need to go to a doctor. No, you don't. God will heal you. Let's take you to the temple. He immediately backed off and someone called the doctor and the boy's life was saved. But strange rumors about me spread through the entire village. And this stupid girl, Maya, she was the biggest gossip of them all. She's evil. She can talk to snakes. She's possessed. She tried to eat a man alive in front of my eyes. Oh yeah? Then you better stay away unless you want to get hurt. Well, it was fun scaring these silly kids away, but Maya wasn't one to be scared easily. She had this habit of picking on other people for no good reason. One time, when I was swimming in the lake by the jungle, she came along with her minions and grabbed all my clothes. Let's see you transform into a snake now, Anaconda. Hey, are you crazy? Give me my clothes back. But they just ran away with them. OMG, what was I going to do now? Make a gown out of leaves? Well, it wasn't such a bad idea, but I was furious at Maya. I had to take my revenge. One day, I saw her making out with a guy behind the barn, and I just knew what I had to do. I picked a huge chunk of cow dung lying on the ground, made a ball out of it, and threw it at her. Ew, gross, who did that? Come out this 
instant. The guy who was with her ran away with the speed of a bullet, but Maya looked raging mad. As I was tiptoeing away, I accidentally stepped on a thorn and screamed out loud. You! You witch! I knew it was you, you evil witch! You're so gone today! And do you think I'll spare you? Then she picked a chunk of cow dung and we broke out into a massive fight. But just as I was about to throw a huge chunk right in her face, she screamed. No, not my face. I can't afford to get pimples. It's my wedding in two weeks. What? Wedding? But she was just 14. For a second, I thought she was bluffing, but no. She was actually getting married. In fact, her parents were going crazy, boasting about her grand wedding all through the village. And Maya, she was getting all the attention she craved for. But this was crazy. She was just a kid. On the day of her engagement, my aunt took me to the party. When all the people left, I saw Maya crying all alone. Something was wrong. Maya... Are you okay? Get off me, witch. I don't want your sympathy. It's bad enough I'm getting married without my will. Just go away. But, but you looked so happy, and you always tell everyone how excited you are. I lie, because I don't have an option. That's just how things are done here, okay? But a dummy like you would never understand. Go away, for God's sake. This was so wrong. Even though I didn't like her that much, there was no way I was going to let it happen. I had to do something. So I decided I was going to kidnap the groom and lock him up in a room. After all, it wasn't just about one girl. It was about snuck into the venue. But just then.